in this discussion we are going to introduce one of our main object of study which is curves in R3 now we will see how do we define curves in R3 in a mathematical precise way and of course we will impose some mathematical conditions for example of differentiability so these kind of conditions help us in finding different properties associated with the curve and of course at the end it will help us in classification of curves in R3 now the question is what is a curve in R3 so we can say that a curve in R3 is basically path of an object for example a flying bird okay so now let's consider trajectory or path of a flying bird now if we introduce uh, the coordinate axis then uh, and if we want to discuss the path of this flying bird then we can just say that at any point we can say that this is the point t is equal to zero and at that point this bird with respect to those coordinate axes will have some position and that position can be described with the help of three coordinates so we can just say that it has coordinates let's say v1 v2 v3 and then when the time this uh, time moves on at uh, for example after one minute it will have the bird will have some other position and it will have some more some other coordinates so let's say these coordinates are w1 w2 w3 and similarly when the bird will move on then as the time changes uh, the trajectory is changing and uh, the bird is moving on and the position of the word bird is changing with respect to time so we can just say that uh, the coordinates of the bird depend on time okay so if we want to write it down in a precise way we can say that this trajectory of the path of the bird can be given as this function alpha of t alpha 1 of t alpha 2 of t alpha 3 of t are its coordinates and this time t varies from 0 to t because uh, that's what we have uh, discussed so we start from t is equal to 0 and this is t is equal to 8 so in these 8 minutes we have recorded the coordinates of each and every point and we have constructed these functions alpha 1 of t alpha 2 of t alpha 3 of t and these coordinates these three coordinates which are functions of the time t gives us the exact trajectory of this bird so we can uh, say that a curve is roughly speaking because we are now uh, Im going to impose more conditions on this uh, rough definition of curve so it is basically uh, a function okay so from 0 8 so in this particular example where we are discussing the trajectory of a bird so it's a function from 0 8 open interval to r3 and now we are taking this open interval just to avoid uh, the mathematical difficulties so that's how we can describe a curve for example which is the trajectory of a bird and in general we can write it down in the following way so a path in r3 or roughly speaking at the moment intuitively what is curve so it is a function from i to r3 where i is an open interval of r3 and this function is defined in the following way so having three coordinates and all of these three coordinates depend on this parameter t which in this particular example was the time but this parameter t could be any other physical quantity or any other mathematical quantity that we intend to choose now these real value uh, uh, this uh, this alpha has this uh, three components alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 so these are real valued functions also known as the euclidean coordinate functions because it is going to provide me the coordinates of uh, the trajectory of this bird or any other moving object in r3 now uh, when do we say that this function alpha is differentiable because that's what we want to impose on or definition of curve because uh, we want the uh, differentiability property of the curve in order to further discuss its property so when this function alpha from i to r3 is differentiable so it is differentiable if its coordinate functions are differentiable so alpha 1 of t alpha 2 of t alpha 3 of t so when all of these three functions are differentiable we say that alpha is differentiable and now we are at a stage where we can define or precise definition of a curve in r3 
So how do we define it? So a curve in R3 is a differentiable function alpha from open interval i to R3. So that's how we define curve and that's what uh, we are going to use for the rest of our discussions. And of course, at some point we will impose some further conditions on the curve depending on the situation. Now let's have a look some of the examples, some of the simple examples around us about uh, curves. Okay. Now consider this example, very simple example of a straight line. Of course, we can see that straight line is a one dimensional object and uh, we can find this corresponding function alpha in the following way. So alpha of t is equal to p plus tq, q is the vector which is basically uh, parallel to this line and p is the point in which this line is passing. So the uh, parametric representation of line passing through point P parallel to vector Q has the following representation. So the first coordinate, so this is basically alpha 1 of t, which is P1 plus t q one The second coordinate function, alpha 2 of t is P2 plus t q 2 And the third coordinate function, alpha 3 of t is P3 plus t q 3 And uh, of course, we can see that uh, this first, second and third coordinates are polynomials in variable t which is linear polynomial and hence these are differentiable functions and hence by our definition of curve it is basically a curve in R3. Now let's have a look at some other examples. Now uh, consider this example where alpha of t is given as a cosine t, a sine t and 0. Now this z coordinate is 0 so in other words we can say that it is some curve contained in the plane. Now if we want to calculate or sketch uh, what is uh, what does this function represent in the plane we what do we do so in this case this t we can t we can say that t varies from 0 to 2 pi okay so when t is equal to 0 we have a point in the plane and uh, when we uh, move or when we change the value of t we take uh, for example uh, uh, for example 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 and up to so on or pi by 2 and up to so on when we increase the value of t then we get points in the plane and we, when we join all of these points then we get this geometrical shape and in this case uh, the geometrical shape that this function represents is basically a circle of radius a in this case okay and uh, now the most important thing to observe uh, about this function alpha is that we moved in this anti clockwise direction so there is there is there are two important things involved in this definition of curve so first thing this geometrical shape that is a circle and the second thing is the orientation so we can just say that this is basically uh, the path of a moving object which is uh, moving on, along a circle but it has a direction of motion as well which is anti clockwise now let's consider another example uh, in this case now the function is given as a cosine t minus a sine t. So there is a minus sign over here and we take t to be once again 0 to 2 pi. Once again if we want to find out uh, the geometry that this function represents uh, we just vary the value of t from 0 to 2 pi and we have uh, we get some points and then we join these points then once again we get a circle but in this case uh, the direction of motion is exactly opposite. So in this case the direction is clockwise. So both of these functions, of course they are different functions, they represent the same geometrical shape which is a circle of radius A but the direction is opposite. So uh, that is uh, once again the same point, uh, this function alpha gives us two things, the geometrical shape that it represents and the direction of motion. So both of these functions were different and uh, geometrically they represent the same thing but the direction was different. Now let's have a look at uh, some other example, alpha of t is a cosine t, a sine t, b t. Now this z coordinates is no more 0 and this z coordinate is basically depending on this parameter t and as the, the parameter value increases, the z coordinate is increasing. Now as you can see that when we will start tracking uh, the, the values of this function, then we will get some path in R3. Now what is so important about this function? Now if we look from the top then it looks like a circle. So that is the important thing because if we just ignore the third coordinate and just look at the first two coordinates then these are uh, the coordinates 
x y which is which are the parametric representation of a circle that we just uh, discussed so a cos t a sin t so from the top it is a circle but the z coordinate is also increasing so that's why we have this helix moving object because the z coordinate is also changing but from the top it is going to be a circle so parallel to xy plane it is a circle if we take this to be zero then it is going to be a circle but we are increasing the value of z as well so that is an example of a helix and uh, when we introduce uh, different tools uh, for discussing the curves then this helix is going to provide us a, a kind of a non-trivial example for checking our tools now the next example is this uh, no, very non-trivial example of Viviani's curve. So what is Viviani's curve? So the parametric representation is given over here. We have 1 plus cosine t sine t, 2 sine t by 2. Now how do we obtain this curve geometrically? So this is obtained as intersection of sphere of radius 2 and center 0, 0. Okay, so we have uh, this uh, sphere. Okay, so let's say this is the z-axis and we have this sphere and the radius is 2 and center is 0 0 0 and the next object is this cylinder so this cylinder over a circle in x y plane so let's say if this is x this is y this is z so we have this uh, uh, circle in x y plane radius is 1 center is 1 0 0 so 1 0 0 will be somewhere over there so we have this uh, circle and then we have this cylinder and when we calculate the intersection of this cylinder and this sphere then we get a curve and it is known as Viviani's curve now let's see another geometrical interpretation of this Viviani's curve now this is a cylinder the same cylinder that we described this is sphere and their intersection is this green curve that we can see obtained as intersection of the cylinder and sphere okay now uh, consider uh, this plane and uh, this is the cylinder with center 0 uh, 1 0 0 and this is the sphere now we are just uh, looking at a uh, situation above x y plane now so this is basically half cylinder and half sphere of our situation now if we look at the intersection of this cylinder and sphere then we can see that it is going to be a curve now if we are not convinced let me introduce the number of points on the curve so now we have uh, the points on the curve and now we can easily visualize that how we are going to obtain this curve now this curve has two uh, properties so properties of the sphere because it lies on the sphere and it has also the properties of the cylinder because from the top it is basically uh, points on the circ uh, on the uh, cylinder okay so this is the one view where we have these points on the sphere and now we are getting another view and you can see that this has some properties of uh, you know very close to circle as well because from the top uh, the points uh, move along a circle if we kind of project this curve onto xy plane it is going to be circle and if we somehow do some other projection then uh, it is going to be some part of the sphere so that's why this curve is uh, important and it's going to provide us a non-trivial example for some of its tools because it has uh, two different properties now this is the end of our discussion on curves so in this discussion we have introduced and defined precisely what are curves in R3 and in our further discussions we will explore the geometry of these objects in detail.